Merry Christmas Eve to all of you. Uh, we saved the best for last at this 10 o'clock service as uh, the day has done its work and we enter into this nighttime and we imagine this story in a new way that God comes into this world in the birth of the baby Jesus. And as I look out, I know so many of you hold this service as special as a tradition for you, and I'm so glad that we have the opportunity to be together. We'll hear the gospel from Luke, we'll sing the songs that we know and some that are new, we'll pray, we'll share in Holy Communion together, and um, as always, as God's word is proclaimed, the Spirit comes and lands on our hearts, and so we entrust that tonight, what you need uh, God will enter your heart and shape us as a community as we lead forth. We're different this year than we were last year, and yet this story continues to speak and continues to proclaim God's love through Jesus is born tonight. So everything you need will uh, be in your bulletin and on the screen. We'll guide you in just a little while to our instructions for candle lighting at the end of the service. So, so glad we are here together, and I invite you um, to join us as we sing and we light all four candles and the Christ candle on the <clears throat> Advent wreath tonight. life, we gather on this holy night to hear the mystery and marvel of how you came into this world. Come, Lord Jesus. Come into the lives of the poor, bringing hope, into the lives of the powerful, bringing caution, into the lives of the weary, bringing rest, into the lives of the wise, bringing restlessness and into our lives and longings, wherever our place. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. The light shines, the angels proclaim, the shepherds hear and go. A mother ponders, God's promise is born. God's Her promise, promise is, is news of great joy, joy for all people. people. Amen. Amen. Please stand in body or in spirit, spirit for our processional hymn. <laughs>
pray together. God in flesh, your love breaks through heaven on this holy night. Gather together this fragmented world and embrace each heart in hope. May all of creation sing of this comfort and joy. Christ is born. Amen. The Gospel today is from the book of Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God's grace and peace and love on this most holy night. Amen. The poet writes, 
Later that night, I held an atlas in my lap, ran my fingers across the whole world, and whispered, where does it hurt? It answered, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. I'm thinking about Joseph this year. He might be the character in this birth story we know the least about. We have to piece together Joseph's story by reading Matthew's gospel because Luke doesn't write much about him. We only know that he was engaged to Mary and that Joseph was from the house of David, the family tree of Israel's greatest king. But it doesn't sound like a kingly lineage kept Joseph from hurt. Early on in the engagement, he was told that Mary was pregnant by another. The life, as he imagined, beginning with her, now forever changed. Joseph had to internally process the shock and disappointment of this news because it was so secretive and scandalous. Luke never mentions that an angel came to reassure Joseph that he was part of God's plan. In this gospel, Joseph holds all of this on his own. Mary left for three months to visit her cousin Elizabeth, to be comforted as the baby grew. But we don't hear of that same support for Joseph. He probably kept working, keeping focused and occupied while he waited and questioned. And then amid the uncertainty of this marriage, the Roman government ordered the people to register in their birth city to be counted in order to be taxed And so Joseph and Mary go. Joseph is held responsible for this journey to take on a story he wasn't writing. And even in his own town, his family was not able to welcome them in. Joseph's unsettledness joins all that Mary is carrying the unfinished pieces thrown together, waiting to understand how this possibly could unfold into a life that mattered to God. And then, while in Bethlehem, Mary's water broke. In the middle of all that wasn't quite right, God comes in a mysterious entry that no one is ready for, somehow weaving Joseph and Mary's separate experiences together now, connecting them and writing this birth story that is still told tonight. The first visitors are not people Joseph and Mary had met before. Wayward shepherds show up proclaiming that angels came from heaven to find them in the fields, to sing of the joy that God has come into this world, and then calling them to see for themselves that this promise was for real. These shepherds who Mary and Joseph probably will never see again witnessed to this birth and God's news of great joy. God calls unlikely people to go, to leave the regular routine, to be a part of God's wide horizon, dawning a day that would forever change the world, adding them to the mix to offer what they had as a piece in this unfolding story. On Wednesday nights here at church at Mount Olivet, as kids and adults come up for communion each week, we invite them to write their prayers on whiteboards. And then at the end of the worship service, we read what has been written and we pray those prayers. 
So much of this writing is from kids. They just know what hurts. Who needs tending and love? And so they write about it. Recently, it was the death of a beloved kindergarten teacher's husband. They prayed for friends who were sick, for people who were hungry and unhoused, for grandparents who have died, for the people and the country of Ukraine. Maybe even more than us adults, kids trust that God will come to the hurting places. And as they grow in their faith, they learn that Jesus, God in flesh, was born to people who were still figuring things out in a place so different from what they expected. And that they met people who came into their lives to bring comfort as they witnessed to God's love. Kids just trust that people will pray their prayers and that God will hear them and in the mysterious mix of divine and human, bring all the forces available to offer love and to bring hope and healing to the hurting places. You see, God is not done creating, even in the messiest of circumstances, so much so that God in flesh enters to experience this bumpy and ever-changing life with us. This is the Christmas story. And in this humble delivery room, did you notice what the first act of love was to the newly born Savior? God, who could concoct an entrance in any way God would like, is received in a swaddle, a tight wrap, an embrace nurtured skin to skin. The first interaction of the divine with human is tender, loving care. And that is the sign the shepherds are told to look for. The angels say, you will find a babe swaddled, lying in a manger. That is God's presence made known. And maybe that can be a sign for us too. When we doubt and struggle with our own faith, when we are longing for purpose or a plan or a place, Look for the moments of tender care because you will find God there too. And when you can't seem to find it, offer that TLC yourself. Be open to the places and the people God is calling you to meet. I connected with a colleague of my dad who at the time was a mother to four teenagers and young adults. Oof. In addition to being a high school counselor who was guiding these emerging, growing adults in all the challenges, joys, and decisions of life, I looked at her in awe and I asked her, what is your secret? How do you do what you do? And her response, just love them. As the poet writes, hurt is everywhere, yes, but love isn't far behind. Showing up in unlikely places, offered from person to person, kind act by kind act, Jesus is born for every hurting place and comes to remind us that that is where God will be found. And maybe that is why all of Jesus' life was coming close to people on the edges, proclaiming that the blessing of God would not be found in some perfect church palace, but would be found in the weeping, the poor, the peacemakers, the hungry, the persecuted, and the excluded. And amazingly, God empowers us 
to both care and be cared for, extending this swaddling love each day to wrap this fragile world. If your life is unsettled, if, you are li- if the life you're living is not the story you expected, if you're holding something tenderly right now, if you're wondering where life is taking you, you're in good company. This is the place where the Savior is born, and on this night, God comes into this weary world connecting people who have never met and also including the earth and the sky all together in proclaiming this story of how the divine is so enfolded in this world. Wherever you are, you are a part of this story, and no part is too small. And this will be the sign, lives wrapped in love. The poet writes, the atlas of the world is held in God's lap, but God can't stay there. God needs to come down, and so a savior is born into this imperfect world and into your heart. Let it be so. Amen. In the far off place, Jesus comes to this time of offering, we offer our gifts to support the mission and vision we have here at Mount Olivet. So we are grateful for your offerings. You can also give online via Venmo uh, by scanning the code in your bulletin. Thank you. 
Join me as we pray over our offering. God of peace, your birth among us is good news of great joy for all people. Turn our hearts toward each other so that we might love our neighbors and share what we have with all those in need. Amen. beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams and for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new promise in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy God, you come to us in bread and wine with love and forgiveness, with mercy and compassion, connecting us to one another and to you. Send your spirit now on this meal and on us that we may behold your presence and be held in your love. We pray now as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There is always a place for you at this table. You too are a part of God's unfolding story. So open your hands and simply receive, for Christ is born for you today. If you are online and having communion at home, hear these words. The body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. For those of you here in person, ushers will guide you forward with the reminder that uh, the wafers are gluten-free, the wine in the cups is dark in color, juice is light, and you are welcome to use the kneelers to pray. Come now, for all has been prepared.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We pray together. Humble God, you came into this world as a child in a manger, and you come to us again in ordinary bread and wine. Send us from this table with joy in our hearts, ready to live the good news that you are with us in all things. Amen. With wonder and thanksgiving for Christ's coming into this world, we pray for the church and for the world and for all who are in need. This day of your birth, O God, dawns with new hope for living things, for starfish that glow in the deep sea and stars that light up the night sky for snow-capped mountains and snow-draped evergreens, for the red panda and the red-tailed hawk, for the oceans and the air, for plants and the soil, that they might pulse again with life. Inspire us, O God, to renew our relationship with your creation. God of heavenly peace, hear our prayer. Bring peace into this world, O God, and an end to armed conflict and violence. Raise up leaders in every community and nation who will honor human rights for all. Give us courageous voices to speak out against oppression in all the spaces where we live and work and play. God of heavenly peace, hear our prayer. Bless all who worship on this holiday. Be present at our tables. Breathe reconciliation into our families and watch over those who travel. Sustain community organizations that, to give, that give to people in need, including our Mount Olivet partners. God of heavenly peace, hear our prayer. Lead those who are in desperate circumstances to safety and shelter, care, and viable employment. Grant rest to those who are weary, companionship to those who are lonely, and comfort those who are grieving. We give thanks for the saints of every time and place who have gone before us. May this cloud of faithful witnesses bless and strengthen us until the day when all are gathered together in the promise of life with you forever. God of heavenly peace. Through the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we entrust all for whom we pray into the tender mercies of God. Amen. I always think it's so cool to worship in the night um, and to end your day in such a meaningful way on this Christmas Eve. And I hope whatever's next, if there's a little bit more gathering or present opening, or maybe it's time um, to hit the hay, whatever that is, um, that you are in the company of people that you love and that you know that this mystery of a God um, is a God who shows up in the tender, loving care that we give and extend out into this world. Um, I do want to leave you with just a futuristic sense of who we are as a church. Um, back in 2019, we created a vision to be open, and that is to be open to where God is calling us as a church. Um, I just came back from the chapel service and stood in the same place that over 100 years ago, um, Mount Olivet has worshipped in for so long, and now we're looking at um, a world in a new view and where the church is. And so we have started our third phase of Be Open. The first two have been grounds and then open tables, and uh, we are due to serve 20,000 meals with partnership with Loaves and Fishes here at the beginning of 2023. 
And now we're really opening a door to what is next for us. How are we called as a church to respond? What are the needs that aren't being met? Um, who are the people and the organizations that we may partner with? We don't quite know the answer, but one way to get there um, is to free ourselves from our mortgage debt. And we received a tremendous gift from a Mount Olivet family to start this generosity in motion. We've added to that COVID relief funds. And so as of today, we are $91,000 away from paying off our $1.1 million mortgage. And I share with that with you tonight um, in case you haven't heard about this work that we're doing. It's a technical detail, but it has a futuristic wing to it on where God is leading us. What could we do with that money that we have spent on mortgage now um, to advance our mission at Mount Olivet? All of those questions are, at, are grounded in God's love through Jesus and how we're called to share it. And I can't wait to be with you a year from now and tell you exactly how all of this is panning out. Um, uh, but if you haven't invested in this, um, I invite you to talk about that as your family to see how your gift, there's no gift too small or too big uh, to make this happen. So thank you so much for your generosity. And um, let me tell you how this is going to work. Um, first of all, uh, just a hearty thanks to our musicians who have been here for the long haul. Blake on the organ and Dan and Katie and Abby. Um, and there have been others um, just singing um, the gospel in so many different ways and inviting us to be a part of that. So thank you so much uh, for sharing your day and your night with us. And they, were good, they will lead us in a oh, holy night at the end of that. Um, I invite you uh, to uh, raise your candles up as we sing Silent Night. The third verse is a cappella to raise that up high. Um, the ushers will come down at the end of each pew and start lighting your candles. Just take the unlit candle and light that unlit candle to the lit candle just for safety. So I invite you to stand now as we first start um, with listening and candle lighting and then singing together. Silent.
comes pure light Radiant beams from thy holy face With a dawn of redeeming grace Jesus, Lord, at thy birth Jesus, Lord, at thy birth Receive the good news of great joy, God's peace descending upon you, God's hope rising around you, and God's love dwelling within you. Be blessed by the God who is born into this world for you, Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is born. Thanks be to God.